Hello all, I'm Wolf Spider and currently I'm on the other side of the world right now, which means I'm a bit late to discussing the final wave of the Booster Course Pass. Yes, you heard me right, it is the final wave, unfortunately. Hard to believe that the end of the Booster Course Pass is here. Two years ago, I didn't think we'd be seeing any new Mario Kart content on Switch, but now we have heaps of tracks new to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We also got some new characters as well. We got Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Peachette, and Pauline in this wave, and I want to talk about them before I get into the tracks. Diddy Kong arriving this late to Mario Kart is criminal. He should have been added much sooner, but I suppose it's better late than never. Ah oh well, not like I played him so much to begin with. Funky Kong is such a fun character to play as, and I'm so glad he's back. With all the wild poses he does, somehow summoning a surfboard for tricks. Of all the new characters though, I find his model to feel the most out of place, however. I wish they spent some more time on his arms and legs to make it feel like part of 8 Deluxe. Other than that, I'm glad he's back to help relive Wii nostalgia. Then there's Peachette, which is the only instance of a character being created after a mainline installment of Mario Kart and then being added later. I suppose that makes her unique, and her biker suit isn't too bad either. It is kind of an odd addition if you ask me though. Then we have Pauline, which is almost a call forward for the Mario Kart series, given Super Mario Odyssey came out three years after the original Mario Kart 8, and her sound clips and tricks being referenced to her appearance in Mario Odyssey. But it's neat to have her as part of the game. And without further delay, let's see what the Acorn Cup has to offer, and beginning the finale is tour track Romavanti. For some reason, this track reminds me a lot of New York Minute, but better? And with a Coliseum. It's honestly a neat track. I like the aesthetic and visuals quite well. I also like driving through the Coliseum twice, and in two different areas. One is an onlooker from above in lap one, and then driving through the thick of it in lap three. Even though Romavanti isn't super unique in my opinion, it's certainly more complex to race on than some of the other city tracks in the DLC. The one thing I will say is that the music isn't bad by any means, but not very memorable. As I'm working this video, I've completely forgotten what the tune sounds like. It just doesn't stick out as Mario Kart to me. Next is GCN DK Mountain, which is clearly based on a tour remake, but the textures match the quality of Mario Kart 8, especially the mountain. Honestly, if a little extra work was put into the background and in some of the rocks, I'd believe that this was in the base game. The new musical rendition is great too, however, I find the edges as you traverse down the mountain to be a bit easy to navigate around. I miss having a bit more of a challenge there. I am glad the bridge wasn't made to be too easy though, and the half pipes are fun. As of this wave, we can now play the entirety of Mario Kart Wii Star Cup thanks to the addition of Wii Daisy Circuit. Honestly, this wasn't a track I would have expected them to add for the final wave, but hey, I'm glad they did. It has pleasant vibes and I think the place looks rather nice with a new coat of paint. The musical arrangement is pleasant, though I think I prefer the Wii version. Besides the secret ramp at the beginning being blocked off by a piranha plant and getting a glider ramp, this track doesn't feel that much different than it did on the Wii, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or bad thing for this track, but that kind of puts it lower in my ranking for this wave. Next up is Newcomer Piranha Plant Cove, and while I'm disappointed we didn't get both this and Piranha Plant Pipeline in the final wave, I'm glad we got Cove instead considering it has a more unique aesthetic. Also, it's got Petey Piranha imagery everywhere, who doesn't want that? I think the mix of underwater sections, geysers, and multiple laps helps this track to stand out on its own and feel very unique. Also, for some reason, its music reminds me of the Paper Mario games, and I'm not entirely sure why. This is easily my favorite track of the Acorn Cup. Now let's move on to the Spiny Cup, starting off with Madrid Drive. This is the freshest track of the DLC to me, and honestly one of my favorite city tracks because of it. I stopped playing Mario Kart Tour not long before this track was added, so I never got a chance to race on it until now. Also, I don't know shit about Madrid, but I love racing through the different buildings throughout this track, including the mall, the museum, and especially the soccer stadium. Now, I always thought it'd be fun to have a Mario Kart track where you race through a football stadium with Charge and Chucks, but I suppose soccer with Karibo Shugumas is a pretty close second, and I mean it is football in other countries so close enough. I also like the music this track has, and the aesthetic is pretty nice as well. Next up is another curveball choice for this wave, 3DS Rosalina's Ice World. I wasn't really hyped about this track at first because I didn't care for it much in Mario Kart 7, despite it being Mario Galaxy themed. But now I quite like it. Its aesthetic is really neat, it has a great new musical arrangement, and I find it pretty fun to race on in Mario Kart 8. I'm not quite sure it's wave 6 material, but it feels more fitting for this wave than Daisy Circuit if I'm being honest. Then we have the second Bowser Castle track to be in Mario Kart 8, SNES Bowser Castle. Castle 3, and let me tell you, this is the closest to base game material we've gotten with this DLC. It looks and feels like it would be in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's main package, but in the track remake section of course. It's almost like the GBA Mario Kart Circuit remake mixed with Wii Grumble Volcano with a flair of this game's Bowser Castle track, and the new musical arrangement of the theme is fantastic. I remember saying that unless a Bowser Castle track returned from Super Mario Kart, I did not want any more SNES tracks, and I'm so glad Nintendo did just that. It's brilliant. Though I am sort of sad that Tour's remake of GBA Bowser Castle 4 didn't make the cut because it seems like it was made to be ported over to Mario Kart 8. Oh well, you can only fit so much, I guess. Ending the Spiny Cup, Wave 6, and the Booster Course Pass overall is Wii Rainbow Road. And I'm not gonna lie, never did I think I'd see the 
day where 3DS Rainbow Road was dethroned from its spot as my favorite Rainbow Road track in the series. Yet here came the Wii Rainbow Road remake for the Booster Course Pass. Yes, the aesthetics are brilliant and more vibrant than on the Wii. The new musical arrangement is fantastic, but most importantly, it's a longer track than 3DS Rainbow Road, thanks to the latter having section laps instead of three loops around the track. Wii Rainbow Road is really fun to play on as well. Also, I love the little addition of the character burning up as they fall off before Lakitu swoops in. The first time that happened to me, I was spooked. I didn't think that was possible, but it's such a fantastic little detail. Overall, I think we've got a lot of strong tracks this wave, even the city tracks, which tend to be a bit controversial. However, I kind of expected all these tracks to be added except Daisy Circuit and Rosalina's Ice World, so I guess this grand finale wasn't as impactful as it could have been, but it was still really fun to play and a great finish to the DLC. Yes, the BCP has officially concluded. No more speculation about what tracks will be in future waves, no more anticipation for new Mario Kart for quite a while. Despite this, Nintendo has injected new life into a nearly decade-old game, and I'm all here for it. With 96 tracks, the largest roster for a console Mario Kart game yet, and with this update, an in-game music player, 8 Deluxe has transformed quite a bit in its 7 year run, and it is drastically different from the original Mario Kart 8 release on the Wii U. Once I'm back in the States, I'll discuss the DLC as a whole package now that the final wave is here. But for now, enjoy your time wherever in the world you are, and I hope you have a great time racing on these last few tracks.